Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back. I hope your day's off to a fantastic start. Today's video is, I guess you could say, a part two to a video that I shared a few days ago where I talked about my top five favorite fall perfumes uh, from cruelty-free brands. Today's video is a little bit different. These are five perfumes in my collection that I think are beautiful for the fall with the caveat of these are not from cruelty-free brands. Now, I will tell you guys how I ended up with these perfumes. Um, all but one um, were basically essentially gifted to me. Um, one I have left over from before I decided to go cruelty-free. Honestly, a lot of the things that I purchased back in the day from non-cruelty-free brands, I have gifted out to friends and family. However, um, I am a bit of, I guess you could say, a girly girl, and when friends and family are thinking about gifts for me, either for holidays, say, you know, one of my family members draws my name at Christmas, or, you know, they're looking for a birthday gift for me, usually the safest bet for those people is to pick up a perfume. <laughs> They know that I wear perfume every single day of my life and you know a lot of times it's just easy to give someone a perfume you know they're at Macy's or they're at Sephora or Ulta and they come across something and maybe it reminds them of me or they think that I might like it um, they purchase that for me and here's the thing I am not the person who is going to you know at my birthday dinner or over the Christmas dinner table, um, give someone a lecture on, you know, the gift that they gave me coming from a non-cruelty-free company. I am not that person. I also just in general do not push my views upon others. What I like to do with my channel is just genuinely share what I love. Um, and you know what I do is I purchase exclusively from cruelty-free brands. So if I am able to share things from cruelty-free brands that I think are fantastic quality, and then that encourages someone who maybe isn't cruelty-free to go for that instead of something from a non-cruelty-free company, I feel like that's a little bit of a win. But yeah, for me, I just I, I don't believe in lecturing people. If someone is going to give me a gift, I am going to receive it in the spirit in which it was intended, which is normally, at least in the case of my friends and family, hey, I saw this, I thought of you, I thought it would smell pretty on you, I thought you might like it, yada yada. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> I do have to put that out there because, um, you know, normally I do not share... Um, products like these on my channel. However, um, I'm going to do it today with the very specific intention of hopefully coming across the, um, the, the computer of someone who is a little bit of a dupe master. I am someone who loves a good dupe for a perfume. There are a lot of cruelty-free dupes out there but I don't know all of them. And the internet is a vast place. There's usually a lot of people, a lot of random people that come across my videos outside of my subscriber base. And my hope is that someone watching today will have a recommendation for me for a cruelty-free option for any of these five fragrances that I'm sharing. Um, because quite honestly, I really do love these fragrances. They're beautiful and they're perfect for the fall. It's just that they're from non-cruelty-free brands. You've probably never seen me mention these here on my channel before, again, because I usually try to promote exclusively cruelty-free, but I did want to see if I could maybe get some suggestions for alternatives. Some of these fragrances, I am kind of nearing the end point and I will not repurchase them myself. As much as I love them, I'm not willing to, you know, put my my ethics, my morals on the line just for a perfume. Anything that is fun, frivolous, or completely unnecessary when it comes to beauty products, like I'm just not willing to compromise my own personal views on that. But if I can find a cruelty-free dupe, I would love to also then be able to come back and share that with you guys as well. So anyway, let's get into these five fragrances today. Um, we are, uh, a lot of these are quite spicy. <laughs> so if you like a spicier perfume during the fall, 
uh, boy do I have some suggestions for you here. I did take some notes on all of the um, fragrance notes on the back of my water bill actually. We more fancy like that here on my channel. So that um, hopefully those of you that are, you know, the, the masters when it comes to finding dupes, hopefully these fragrance notes kind of maybe jog your memory and make you think of something that you could recommend to me. And honestly, others out there who would like to experience very similar scents, but you know, preferably from a cruelty-free company. I hate to keep bringing that up, but it is something that, um, honestly, this video makes me a little bit uncomfortable sharing this just because I know that I don't typically share this type of stuff here and it's a little bit of a departure for me. So it just makes me a little uncomfortable. But that being said, again, you guys know my intention. So if you have the alternatives, please let me know down below. Also, I will list and link all of these fragrances in the description box. So if you're interested in reading up more about them, you can, uh, you can find that information down there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna get started with the perfume that I think made me laugh the most when I um, unwrapped it. I think I thought this bottle was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> this is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal. And oh my goodness, is this, uh, is this a cap to the bottle, right? So just some fun little legs hanging in the air with some little booties, super cute. Oh, you guys, this fragrance. So this one here is the least spicy out of the five uh, recommendations. Um, it's probably also maybe, I would say, the sweetest. So if you are looking for a fall fragrance, this is maybe just a little bit sweeter, but definitely still has the fall vibes. I This gives it to me. Um, and honestly, I am running extremely low on this one. And as much as I would love to continue to wear this, mm, I'm not gonna repurchase it myself. So I'm really, really hopeful that someone out there can give me an alternative to this one. So let's go ahead and read through the fragrance notes. Uh, okay, so we have orange, mandarin, honey, gardenia, orange blossom, jasmine, peach, beeswax, caramel, patchouli, and licorice. So um, patchouli is gonna be kind of a common fragrance notes throughout all of these. And I am someone who actually happens to really enjoy patchouli. It works really well with my body chemistry, but it has to be a specific type of patchouli. Not dirty hippie patchouli, but perfumey, pretty patchouli, I am all about. And this one has the most beautiful perfumey patchouli in it, you guys. Um, when, I, when I spray this on me, what really comes through are the floral notes of the orange blossom, the jasmine, the gardenia. They're just so pretty in here. But I also really smell a lot of that beeswax and honey in here. Um, the honey just is the most unique sweetness in here and it's so pretty. This is one of those fragrances that I always get compliments on when I wear it out. This is a beautiful date night option. I just think it's so pretty. And that patchouli is, it's the perfect addition to this. I will say if the licorice kind of scares you off, I really don't get a ton of licorice from here. I really actually smell more caramel than anything else. This one has a beautiful sweetness to it, like I mentioned, and it is the least spicy out of my recommendations here. So if you typically don't go for spicy fragrances, this one would be a good option for you. Plus the bottle, like I mentioned, is absolutely hysterical, but I feel like Jean-Paul Gaultier is kind of known for their um, interesting perfume bottles, <laughs> and this one is no exception here. So Scandal, it's really, really pretty. Okay, the next fragrance is almost polar opposite in terms of the spice level. Um, this is Gucci Guilty, and specifically Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. So, uh, sorry about my French there. I only took a year of it in high school. That was my freshman year. Decided it wasn't for me, and um, yeah. So, sorry about my French accent. <laughs> anyway, let's go through this Gucci fragrance here. Um, this one has some lovely spice to it. It also has a really beautiful blackberry note. So blackberry, pink pepper, which is where we're getting that spice, bergamot, cypress, Bulgarian rose, woody, vetiver, 
patchouli, once again patchouli, and amber. Amber is another one. I'm just a sucker for the amber. And this one here, ooh, it absolutely opens up with the blackberry and the pink pepper. Like, stick your nose in this, and it's immediate blackberry, immediate pink pepper. Then it moves into that rose for me. Little bit of that cypress and woody note. And then at the bottom is that beautiful base of amber and patchouli. And oh man, this one, my body chemistry really likes a spicy fragrance. This one smells so warm and cozy and inviting on my skin. Again, just another, I feel like all of these would just be great date night fragrances. If there is a cruelty-free option out there for this one, please, please let me know what it is. It is absolutely stunning. I will say it's one that's a little hit and miss. I have had some people tell me like, ooh, that is, that's a lot. <laughs> and it can be. Um, the, the, the projection on this one, just the, uh, just the power of it is quite intense. Do not overdo it with this one. Um, but man, just a light hand and it is absolute perfection to my nose. I really love this one. And mm, I'm not quite halfway through. I would say like I'm, I'm a third of the way through. Uh, I'm going to miss this one for sure when I finish it. Okay, next let's go with what is probably the cutest bottle ever in the history of perfume bottles. This is Victor and Rolf uh, Bon Bon. Now this one here is a frequently complimented fragrance of mine and um, I am definitely past the halfway point on this one. And this one here, it's got a little bit of a touch of spiciness to it, but it really is more of a focus on like um, just warmth like this comes across as really warm to me so we have caramel mandarin orange peach orange blossom jasmine by the way a lot of these notes kind of repeat themselves here which i just found really interesting because again i didn't pick any of these out myself with the exception of one that i've had left over from like back in the day um but yeah, it's so interesting to me that a lot of these fragrance notes are so similar. And these all, these gifts all came from different people. <laughs> so I think I, I think I might have like a, or something that I just put out there, you know, in terms of like, hey, this type of stuff smells good on her. Okay, cedar, guaiac wood, sandalwood, and amber. Oh, the amber in here. The amber, I think, is what makes this fragrance for me. It does open up with that really nice sweet caramel note for sure. Oddly enough, mandarin and orange, I don't pick up in here, but I get a touch of peach for sure. I get that jasmine. The jasmine is, oh, this jasmine is beautiful. Orange blossom, absolutely. Cedar and guaiac wood. There is a really nice woodiness to this one. And that sandalwood also. Ugh, the amber. I think for me, the amber, like I said, is what makes this fragrance. If you are a lover of amber, definitely sniff this one out. This is another one where I think you kind of have to be careful how much you apply because she is a powerhouse. And um, yeah, I've been told to uh, lay off this one a couple of times by Craig. <laughs> I do I tend to overdo it with perfume to begin with um, but a lot of my perfumes I think are a little bit softer and so if I overdo it it's not quite as offensive but when you are overdoing it with these spicy fragrances you can definitely cause some people to get a headache so do be mindful of others around you I try to do that um, all right let's keep going this one here Okay, this is an old school fragrance of mine. I have had this in my collection forever. Honestly, most of the non-cruelty-free fragrances that I purchased myself, I have since passed along to friends and family. I had to keep this one because I just think this one is so pretty. It's Calvin Klein Euphoria, and it's the very like original Euphoria. None of like the retakes here. Oh, okay. Pomegranate, persimmon, green accord, black orchid, lotus, champaka, mahogany, amber. Once again, we're back with the amber. 
black violet, and whipped cream of all things. Okay, first of all, it's the pomegranate that gets me here. I, I love cranberries, I love pomegranates. Those are kind of my favorite, like I guess you could say, fruity type scents for the fall months and they are both present in here and they're perfect. Oh, that black orchid and the black violet, absolutely present in here. Mahogany too, normally I don't love mahogany, but I think it really just works in here with these uh, floral notes and it it's so pretty. This one is a little bit spicy. I wouldn't call this one overly spicy, but it definitely, it does have a little bit of spice to it, so be careful if that's something that you don't enjoy. But once again, it is the amber that gets me in this one and makes me fall in love with it. It is beautiful. This is another one where the projection, it's a powerhouse, so please be mindful of application here. And if you do happen to have a dupe for me, let me know. Um, I'd love to be able to replace this one with an option that is cruelty free. The very last one is <clears throat> honestly uh, one of my favorite smells in the world because my mom wears this perfume as well and it is Coco Chanel. Not Coco Mademoiselle, none of like those lighter girlier options. We are talking the OG spice monster that is Coco. Um, I love the classic look of this perfume bottle. Um, obviously Chanel, they, they know how to do packaging. I wish that Chanel would go cruelty free. Listen, this one, I have definitely had some people say that it smells a little bit old fashioned. So if that's not your vibe, then definitely skip this one. But I think because my mom wears this, it, it has a little bit of like a sentimental value to me. It just, my, my mom's still here. I'm not implying that my mom is no longer with us. She's still very much here. But it just it reminds me of my mom. I love my mom. I love the way my mom smells. And this is just a very, very pretty scent. It is definitely, it's got a solid rose base to it. So I think it's that rose that maybe makes it a little bit more old fashioned smelling, but it is beautiful. If you've never smelled this particular Chanel perfume, the next time they're at a department store, the next time that you're at Sephora, whatever, sniff this one out. Okay, let's go through these notes. Uh, Bulgarian rose, coriander, so we're getting a little bit of that spice here again. Peach, jasmine. Peach has been very um, present in a lot of these, hasn't it? Um, Mandarin, once again orange, clove, oh, I love the clove in here. We've got, to, again, a nice spice note. Um, we have orange blossom, we have mimosa, clover, sandalwood, tonka bean, oh, the tonka bean in here is beautiful, civet. Um, I'm gonna mess this one up. Opopanox, Opopanox, I believe. Vanilla and labdanum. Oh, you guys, this one, this one you do have to be quite careful with. It is a light spritz on the wrists and done for me. So I've had this bottle for a very, very long time. I think Craig bought this for me. I can't remember. Anyway, um, this is heavenly to my nose. I think it, once again, it reminds me of my mom, but it also has those beautiful spice notes of the coriander, the clove, Oh, the sandalwood in here is really lovely. That vanilla, the tonka bean. And I happen to really love the rose. I love a good rose-based scent, and I think this one here is beautiful for the fall. It is a lot heavier than a lot of the other Chanel fragrances that I've smelled in the past. Um, it's definitely one of their OGs. I'm glad that they still have it in their collection, but that being said, um, it's another one that I would love to find an alternative for. So if you know of one, please let me know. Anyway, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Um, if you found this video helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. And um, I am really looking forward to reading through the comments here to hopefully find some alternatives once I finish these up. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Toodaloo.